Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with my normal Wednesday guest to go deep talking about mortgages and loan estimates. We're bringing on Matt, the mortgage guy. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Mike. Thanks for having me. This is going to be fun. Yeah, so one of the things that just kind of paint the picture of is I have this course called How to Get Started One Rental at a Time, uh, which everybody on this call is a part of. Uh, you created some content probably nine, maybe even 12 months ago, uh, helping people understand how to read a loan estimate uh, because there was a lot of refi going on, just a lot of mortgages being done. And you really were trying to help people um, just compare apples to apples, which was amazing. And in one of your videos, you showed how people could literally save thousands of dollars by reading a loan estimate, which is crazy because my course is like 300 bucks or 320 and you're saving them potentially thousands, which I appreciate because that's a great ROI. But now we're in a different spot. I don't know if people realize this, but the mortgage industry is not in the same place, right? Uh, purchase demands down 30%, refi demands down 83%. And I've been in sales for most of my adult life. And unfortunately, we are going to have some very bad operators in the mortgage space. They are going to hide, lie, sneak, I mean, whatever, whatever you want to say, just to feed, right? And um, that that y y knowing that's coming makes me sick. So what I wanted you to do is I wanted you to go through loan estimates so that more people can compare apples to apples. Uh, then I wanted to have students ask you questions because there's a lot of vocabulary, a lot of acronyms in the mortgage industry, and I am really, really afraid that a one rental at a time student or even fan is going to get taken. I mean, getting taken for a thousand bucks because you didn't understand how to compare is bad. You and I had a video last week or the week before about somebody getting a worse loan with more fees and a higher rate because the salesperson was better. That should not happen. The mortgage industry should it should be easier for the average person to compare so i've been what do you think of all that because i think today is a critical session yeah i really like this and i really like the fact that i know i'm going to help some people because when when you talk about you know that happening as a one off like it happens every single day and i see it right and and i hear some of the stuff that people say i mean to be completely honest i'm in some mortgage coaching groups where some of these people who are in the coaching groups aren't in the best price model, right? right? Like as a broker, I'm able to, to offer, it might not be the very best out there, right? But it's, it's, it's going to be very near the best as, in terms of pricing. There's guys that like, it used to be the joke was like, they sell service. Well, how much sir? What is service really worth? <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. Like, like I'm a little bit nicer on the phone. And so I, you should pay an extra. I got a, I got a nicer building. My view's better. <laughs> yeah. And, and the stuff that I see, I mean, it's bad. And then the, the average person is like, no, I'm not going to get got right. Like I know what I'm looking at. People present loan estimates, you know, loan scenarios, a mock-up of what your loan's going to look like in 974 different ways. Exactly. So for you to tell me that you can decipher it when I do the stuff 365 days a year and I've got to sit back and go like, what are they showing? And, and like you said, some of them are bad operators. Some of them are purposefully leaving stuff out. Some of them are over promising and it makes sense. Like you said, before there was a refi boom, there's a bunch of money to be had. People were trying to get all the business. Now there's a lot less business to be had and people are desperate, right? Like when car sales are down, there's going to be one car salesman that really needs to feed his family. That's going to tell you it's a, a V8, not a V6. And that, you know, the, the, whatever, whatever the, whatever the lies are, right. I don't want that to happen to you in your mortgage. I had um, a client. I always, always, always want to make sure the client gets taken care of. And if they've got, you know, in their small town, some credit union, they've had a relationship with for 30 years, that's going to give them a five-year arm for five and a quarter more power to you but I want to know what went into their buying decision, what their mortgage was they got. And I've done many of these. I feel like I've got good rapport people. They like me, they trust us and, and they want to work with us. Finding out after the fact, 
that they went with somebody who they liked less, who gave them a worse deal, but presented it as a better deal. That's the worst thing in the world. Um, re the, the most recent was, I think we talked about it, Mike, was uh, the builder told them that yeah. uh, it was it was better because it was a one package process, meaning that they wrote the real estate contract with Lennar Homes and they had Lennar Mortgage as the lender. Who, who cares, right? Like, Yeah, yeah. Is, just because the logos are the same doesn't right. mean it's a better deal. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and uh, you know, truth be told, in this current environment, there's going to be lenders that are priced a quarter or a half a point worse. If you're borrowing any significant amount of money, that's a lot of money per month. And the way that loan estimates appear, I know people aren't able to read them because I talk to yeah. these people every single day, right? And, and it's not anything against you. You're yeah. a great nurse. You're a great mechanical engineer. You're a great something. You right. don't study mortgages every single day. So looking forward to it. If anybody has, you know, any loan estimates they've seen or, or anything, I'd, I'd love to do that. I've actually, like I told you, you know, whited out names and, and have a few yeah. myself just so we can look at the basics. Yeah. So we're going to go into that. We're going to look at this again, folks, get your questions in. Uh, we will go through all of them. Um, we, we, again, like you're, you, I think your car salesman's a great example, right? They're going to like, you, you want a V8? Well, here's a V8. Oops. It's only a V6. You, 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 most people don't look under the hood and have any <laughs> idea. Right. Um, so yeah, it's, um, there's a lot of sharks in the, in, in the mortgage industry. We are going through a time where demand is down and these sharks got to eat and I don't want them to take some of your flesh. And that's why Matt's here. Uh, do me this. We'll do it again at the end. But if somebody wanted to reach out, compare, do this apples to apples, how should they reach out to your team uh, before we get started? Best way is through greatmortgagebroker.com. Um, since since pricing is kind of varies state by state, going through, um, you know, my, my Sacramento team is going to be tough. We're going to reroute you. Um, but I've got teams all over the country that are, that are going to help with, with this. And we really this week just stood up new and improved pods in every state where I've got literally the the best loan officer on my team handling this stuff that comes through greatmortgagebroker.com. So greatmortgagebroker.com, uh, let us know where you're at, how we can help. And if it's just comparing an estimate, great. Uh, we'll give you honest cool. feedback and send you on your way. Very cool. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's bring up an example and start, uh, start the education process. What do you, which one do you want to go to first? Let's do it. Um, I've got one, let me see, probably mostly investors. So I'll bring up uh, this investment one first and we'll see, hopefully we can see it. Can see it. Okay. Yep. This is what a loan estimate looks like. Every single deal you do, that's a, this conventional, um, or FHA or VA. So let so let's let's really get, let's really make sure this is good. When do you get a loan estimate? You'll get a loan estimate as soon as you're in contract. The lender, you know, this is initial disclosures, is what they'll call them. And okay. so, so so I'm I'm an investor in this example. I'm working with my agent. I find something. I write an offer. I get accepted. I'm in contract. This is when I go to you, a mortgage broker, and say, hey, I'm buying a house. Here's the purchase contract. Uh, this is my agent. Um, let's, go, you know, basically, let's go. That's, that's when this happens. Right. And, and what, I sh what I should have prefaced this with is, you know, before you get into contract, you're not necessarily going to see a loan estimate. Lenders, uh, you know, don't want to trigger, trid, and do the stuff on our side that we have to do, you know, from a... Uh, uh, compliance standpoint to get this to you when there's no property yet and you're just looking. But what I hope is, and maybe I'll pull one of these up too. Uh, we send people when you're just looking mm -hmm. something that looks very similar to this. And this yeah, is so where, show me that, show me that first. Okay. I'll show you that because, because this is where it gets really, you may need to stop sharing and reshare. Cause I'm not, I don't think it's changed. Yeah, well, I'm I got another screen rolling, so I'm just gonna pull it up okay. on the screen, and then oh. I'm gonna. I think Excel's pulling up. Is that what you expect? Yep, there we go. Okay, cool. And you so it. you'll notice, like, let, let me let me scroll. So, let, so I want to be very clear. So in this case, this what we're looking at in Excel is not a loan estimate. This is a borrow card. You called you, reached out to 
reached out to you or greatmortgagebroker.com, had a basic conversation and you're like, hey, let me give you some scenarios. Right. That's what this is. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And so, and so the, the, the cool part about this, because we're just transparent is yeah. if you scroll through here and, and we'll go back through it, but just real quickly, you've got box A, box B, box C. This looks a lot like a loan estimate. You know what happens when people see this first and they know exactly what they're getting into. And then we disclose them the official document. They know what the heck they're looking at, right? Here's the problem. Uh, you're going to get something that says your payments 5490, your cash to close is 172,400 and a lot of the details are missing. And then yeah. that's where, you know, when somebody tells me, "Hey, what can you do? I've got a um 7.25% interest rate on this purchase." Yep. Well, what 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 other details we got? Like how much are you yeah. paying for it? And and is it a 30 year fixed rate? All these things, these are things that you want to know and question. So, so I want to be very clear about this. And if I'm wrong, tell me the loan estimate, which is what you showed us first. And we are not looking at currently that has regulation about it around it. Hence the template is the same for everyone. What you are looking at here in Excel is Matt, the mortgage guy's creation, trying to emulate the loan estimate. So any, you know, point A to point B conversations are easy to digest. But this, this could be as simple or as complex that any other broker wanting. This is not regulated. What we're looking at in Excel right. is not regulated. And, and 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 some people are as simple as like, hey, he responded to me in an email that said payment rate closing costs. I even I even know some loan officers that say, oh, we don't tell the client the rate. That's mm -hmm. probably a bad sign. If, uh, if, if you're talking to someone, they're like, oh yeah, your payment's 24, 36 a month and, and you got to bring 84,000 to close. And they just leave out, like if they're leaving it out, I would suggest that like, they probably are leaving it out for a reason. Yeah. So again, but this is important for people to realize is the lending landscape was, um, I'll say hammered with regulation post great recession. Cause it was housing led. What come out? What came out? It because these loan estimates again, not what we're looking at. What's behind this is regulated. This is not, and I think a lot of people are are getting these. I don't. know, What would you call this Excel spreadsheet? What what would what would this be? What's the mortgage lingo? I I call it like a loan scenario where it's like hey, ah scenario. scenario. Yeah. I like it. Not an estimate because that's regulated. Yeah. This is a scenario. Wow, oh, sexy. Right. And uh, I mean, it's 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 kind of wild because. People will go out there and they'll be like, oh, I'm, I'm talking to three guys. I'm talking to four different loan officers. And one told me this, one told me that. They don't even know which one's better. One is an email. One is a phone conversation. One is an Excel spreadsheet. It's like, who, who do you trust? Who can really deliver? And then if they told you rate without cost, what does that mean? If they told you, you know, it's a no cost loan and, and here's the payment, but they didn't give you a rate. Like, what does that mean? You got to have all the information to be able to compare it apples to apples. Because a lot of times people come to me, hey, is this about what price you would have, or this is about what you could do? And they give me incomplete stuff. Yeah, oh, like, six... yeah I could do that too. But what about this? I could do this too. But what about that? Yeah, right. That's, of course yeah. I can do 6.99. But do you want to pay 23,000 in points? Yeah. Of course I've got a no cost loan. But do you want 7.99 on interest rate? Like these are the questions and these are yeah. the things that um, people should be asking if. If you can't get clear answers yeah. on, you know, and, and here's where in, in the course, the, the, the meat of it, the real, like, if you want one takeaway was you look at the interest rate, you look at box A, which is this box, only box controlled by the lender. You're going to have title fees. You're going to have prepaying taxes and insurance. You're going to have days of interest. You're Those gonna are have, escrow fees. You're going to have all these other things that are all third party. The only thing. That's going to vary. And, and, and here's something to, to listen to, too, for people. Box A is the only thing I control as the lender. But guess what? When I give you my estimate, watch how easy this is. Oh, not $1,150 for that title fee. I'm going to make it $550. Mine's going to look better now. Oh, transfer taxes, zero. That's ah! all it takes for me. And then, and then what happens, Mike? Somebody promises you the world. And their fees are $4,000 less. And then you go, what's that, man? It's $4,000 more. And they go, oh, 
I didn't have transfer taxes in there. That's not controlled by us. That's oh, like the side oh, ending contract. Oh, oh, the 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 title fee was was twelve fifty. Oh, well, I'll fix that for you on on here. But that's the title company. The title companies I worked with, they're usually cheaper. But that's oh, yeah, you use somebody different, not my yeah, guy. The, <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, dude. Like salespeople are good, and and you you think that you're in control as the buyer. Like some some of these folks have met. I mean, they're they're professional salespeople. And the thing about it is, is we've got the templates and we're showing people exactly what we can offer. I've got other people on my team presenting because I don't think that it's a sales role. I think that it's an advisory role. Here's what is there. And then the only, you know, changes from client to client is based on your situation. Do we want to pay points? Do we not want to, do we want to get into you know, yeah, the, can, the two one buy you, down. Can you go, can you go back to the third party fees again? I want to hit this one more time. Cause I don't think people, I want to hit it. Cause it's that important. Yeah. Box C is like the title stuff. And this yeah, is, so, and this is an overestimate by design. I yeah. want you to get the real fees that come out $1,700 cheaper than go. Oh, cool. It's cheaper. Yeah. That I, makes me look like, good. That makes you right. refer your cousin. If I tell yeah. you this box totals 1400, it totals 2,500 then you got a bad taste in your mouth. So I'm doing the opposite. Yeah, I like it. So again, folks, you got to remember what you're looking at. Are you looking at a loan estimate, which has regulation? Or are you looking at scenarios? You have to look at third-party fees because you, you are being tricked. There are sharks in the water that are starving. And when sharks starve, they will eat anything. And I want them to be you. Matt, the mortgage guy is on my channel. He's in my course because I trust him, his reputation. He has done right by all of us. That's why he is here. What is the website? One more time. Greatmortgagebroker.com. Very cool. So let's look at a loan estimate. Tell us yeah, about and, Box and, A and, and, and here's something too. Another like stop, get your pad and your, and your paper. If you want to write something down, write this down. This happened to a client of mine last week. Was in contract on Monday. Was talking to another lender and, and us. And my thing is like, listen, man, like we're happy to help. I want to, like, he had a pretty complex deal where it's like the seller wanted a net, uh, it was 888. And so it could be uh, 915 with 27 in credit. It could be, you know, 900 with with 12 in, in credit plus 15 for a buy down. There's all kinds of different ways he could have gone with this. Right. Spent four days talking to somebody who had sent him a loan estimate and got started but here's the problem, Mike. Top right, rate lock. It will tell you yes or no. Is your rate locked? And so he had a loan estimate that looked good to him. Problem was it wasn't locked. All right. So problem- let's talk about this. Yeah. So so your loan estimate. So we're in contract. You have a deal. You have you as a uh, broker have collected real information enough to generate a quote. And that yet, what does that yes mean? This yes means yes, the rate is locked and it'll tell you until what date. So until 1119, which if you notice, this was issued on 1019. Oh, gotcha. Okay. We did a 30 day lock the same day. If you like it, you lock it. And we, have, we've, we haven't wavered from that in almost a year. It's served our clients well, right? And so this is locked. Here's another. What does a lock. borrower have to say? Like, do you have a, do you or someone on your team have a conversation? And it's locked or do they have to sign something or what? Well, this is, this is the, 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 the general conversation recently is that like, as soon as we get in the contract, we're going to lock your loan. Okay. We are going to basically pin wherever we think is the, the sweet spot in the, in the rate sheet, Mm -hmm. which in this case was 7.49 on this investment property. After we lock it, you can slide up and down that rate sheet all you want, but we've locked in that rate sheet for you. And okay. in different eras, maybe we've danced around like, oh, look, maybe some good data is going to come out on Friday and rates will get a little better. Do you want to lock now or do you want to wait? Yeah. Now yeah. it's just, we lock, we lock, we lock, we lock, we lock. So, so in this case, you have a 30 day lock, which seems pretty standard. Again, if it's not, tell me. What happens if you're like, hey, we the, the seller needs to stay back for a month. We're not going to close for 60 days. Do you have that conversation? And if you need longer, do you, does the rate change or fees change? Or what about all that? Yeah, I mean, rate extensions, especially right now, 
people used to people used to be like, oh my gosh, it's going to cost me fourteen hundred dollars to extend this for thirty days. Well, in today's environment, the the uh, the alternate path of getting the new rate, which which came out thirty days later, mm. is light years worse, right? And so right. we had a client recently where we actually negotiated with the seller. That's the other right. good part about being in a market where you can negotiate. Yeah, the seller needs an extra thirty days. The seller's paying for that for that rate. Yes, um, okay. and and so it's not on the borrower. But yeah, that that stuff can be negotiated. And so thirty days is pretty standard. What I hear you saying, anything past that is a discussion. Right, and we know okay. up front how the contract is written. So we got one in yesterday. It's a forty-five day. We'll lock that one for forty-five days. We've got okay. others, and actually, you know, because of the fact that we send a lot of business to these lenders. Most of our clients know this, but we 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 don't we don't tell them up front just to make sh- we have five free days of extension. And so like I, I know for a fact this client was like, hey Matt, the 19th is a is a Saturday. So if we can't close on the 18th on a Friday, like they were getting themselves worked up. People are, you know. Well, rates rates are exploding. Of course we're freaking out. We don't want well, 8.8. <laughs> yeah. And I I get it, right? Like buying a house is a, is is a fearful thing. I told this client one. I got five days, so I can get you to tell that next Tuesday or Wednesday too. Like, we've got your back. We're going to help. Like, I, every single day, Mike, I'm making decisions on, you know, we had to do a, a rescore on this client's credit. It cost us 300 bucks. I'll eat it. Let's go. You know, this this happened. We had to extend it for four days and it cost 622 bucks. I got it. Let's go. Like, I personally am not, you know, a big corporation that's just like, well, that's on you, buyer. Yeah. I'm I'm in a relationships business where my reputation and matters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And so uh that's actually one of our core values at you mortgage. Relationships, not transactions. So Okay. Um, Very cool. I like it. We're going right. we're going to make it right to a certain extent. If if, if the, the list side wants to uh extend it for 30 days, I'll I'll help you uh with that negotiation. You say if you want me to close on this Sellers day, paying. You're you're paying for it, seller. <laughs> yeah, so this is this is the official loan estimate. Generally mm-hmm. You know, within 24 hours of going into contract, uh, we're going to order title fees and get those fees so that this is accurate because the third-party fees that that vary, that we kind of have to guess at on the original um, yep, the scenarios scenario. we show you, yep. we want them to be accurate. And the, and the funny part is I've talked to a lot of lenders that don't do that, mm-hmm. where they just have, they call it smart fees or it's automation around them. We're going to guess. And I'm like, uh. why would you guess? <laughs> My, that's, my that's team, lazy. That's right. Lazy. My team is all over the title company uh, to get us those fees within four hours. In some states, it might take them 24, but we just tell the client, listen, like we want to yeah. disclose accurately. So cool. you're going to get this and these fees that are down here for prepaying your tax and insurance and appraisal and, and the different title fees are, are going to be dialed in straight from the start. So um, okay. You want to go through this? You want me to go through this loan estimate kind of page by page? Well, yeah, I think we should. I think we should do that at least once. Yes. Yeah, for sure. So um, yeah, like I said, loan estimate on conventional FHA, VA, there might be some, some funky other ways to disclose non-QM loans and some of the, some of the fancy stuff. But if you get a conventional loan or an FHA loan or a VA or USDA, this is what it's going to look like. This is the document that, that all lenders uh, have to have to use. Check and make sure it's locked. It'll tell you up here your loan type. It'll tell you, you know, the product, 30-year, fixed rate. This is a purchase. And obviously, I whited out client's name and, and property. But here's the sales price. Here's the loan amount. Here's the interest rate. This is important to people, so I'm glad that they put it on here, like, bright and clear. Yep. Can this amount increase after closing? Loan amount can't increase. Interest rate can't increase. So no, no, no. Um, I like that. And- I'll show you in the two one buy down how it's disclosed mm-hmm. differently because the okay. rate does change, right? It starts at four mm-hmm. and a half and it and it goes up. Um, and then here's the breakdown, principal and interest, taxes and insurance, and total payment, um, okay. which this for people is one of the most important things. Mm-hmm. This 2095 should look very similar to what somebody discussed with you the scenario on, on yep. scenarios right and and almost without fail we're within ten dollars because you know the, the property awesome. taxes if it's california we've got a you know 
a, a city feature. variances yeah, and stuff, yeah one and a quarter there might be melarus might not you know the homeowner's insurance um and then the the, the cost at closing this will estimated closing costs where it says 22,000 this is you know all loan costs and all you know prepaid taxes and insurance which you know also fall into that bucket of closing costs so here's the total cash to close and then the next page will break this down for you exactly okay. what everything is um box a like i said on our last one on our last one on that excel spreadsheet it didn't look exactly like this but we went box a b c d and then E, F, G, all down one row. Right. But same, same stuff. Um, you know, it's so again, I want to be very clear. Lo box A is what you as a broker could control fees and this, that, the other. Everything else should be pretty standard. But again, where you will get caught by a scenario in a slimy salesperson is you will see some of these other costs suddenly come out is higher. Oh, I didn't know. Or, oh, you didn't use my guy. Or, oh, oh, oh. Because again, the loan estimate is regulated. Right, right. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Except for that, like I've seen loan estimates where it's not locked and Rocket okay. is like, a Rocket does this where they send out an, an unlocked loan estimate. In box A, there won't be points. And then you'll get a follow-up loan estimate. It's locked. And now all of a sudden there's Nine thousand. Uh, so I want to say that again, right? So they again under the rules of the road, right? Sending out a loan estimate. If it's not locked, it could change, and hence when they send it to you, change suddenly it has points. Yeah, and I think that like they can sell that by being like, "Oh, it wasn't locked," and so um, yeah, the lock cost you. And, and I think that to do it in their system, like I don't know, it's such shady shit. I don't even know how to do it, Mike. But like yeah. I think in their system they could like strip out the comp and be like, oh, we're doing this loan for free. And so that's oh, how it's shown. And then it's like, oh, when we're going to lock it. Yeah, let's add the comp back in. And, and now the client's got, you know, 8,800 in, in fees and box A, whatever the case may be. Like, I don't know. Like some of that stuff, you just can't work with shady companies. You just got to make sure you work with somebody you like and trust. Um, and then even that sometimes isn't enough because you might like and trust the guy that's in some crappy model that just charges more. Um, I, yeah, they I gotta, think they have to operate in their rules of their rules of their road, I guess. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you work for a company that's just got, you know, monster margins, cause they're trying to survive. That's another thing about this environment is, is you've got some people, you know, competing hard and lowering margins so they can get more business. You've got other companies like, oh my gosh, we only have 20% of the volume we had from before. Yeah, so we're going to charge more on every deal. Sharks are starving. Sometimes yeah. they... They do shady stuff. So, yeah. Okay. So, right. so box A, you know, 1.6 points. That's, that's the 3797 to get this 749 on an investment property because unfortunately guys, we're in an environment where investment property rates are going to be in the eights, but you know, 1.6 points, get it, get it in the mid sevens. Box B shows appraisal box C, um, survey title fees this is something to think about too like if you get a loan estimate from somebody and it's somebody who who you like and trust there might be something in here like a survey i know for sure on this one we disclosed it just in case if mm -hmm. this property doesn't need a survey you won't be charged this but right. this document is to protect the consumer and i'm saying like in box b where i say 75 dollars credit report when we do rescores for people and it costs $622 to rescore three different bureaus on two different trade lines, mm -hmm. I can't charge you $622 if I didn't disclose it here. You Ooh. can't get, you know, final loan docs. And so I eat that, right? And so, when, so to avoid eating that, my team goes, hey, I don't know if a survey is needed, but I'm going to put it here just in right. case. Mm -hmm. Um and then this client's like, hey, dude, what about what's this survey fee? Don't worry about it. We've confirmed with the lender. You don't need it. Um, and so so that'll come off. <laughs> Another thing, too, I was thinking to myself, 22000 is a lot between um, loan costs and prepaids. In box F here, there's 12 months of property taxes plus another 11 months and then initial payment of five months of, of property taxes. I apologize. Wow. I'm a human. 
this this was a bad le that we went back and said oh so the lender only wants to collect 28 months of property taxes up front this seems legit this yeah. this was like these 23 months basically came off the lender just wanted to collect five months up front so yeah. my apologies I, I i know that uh in my file there was a follow-up le that came like two hours after this one but yeah. um it's okay you know i i won't belabor what prepaying homeowners insurance and taxes are i've got one of the best videos on youtube what is an impound account i know it's one of the best videos on youtube because people keep watching it like month yeah. in and month out and keep keep replying i've watched four videos on this and it finally makes sense so so go to matt the mortgage guy on youtube watch uh what is an impound account and it'll tell you why they're collecting stuff up front mm -hmm. and then you know down here uh is your estimated cash flows it's the same numbers up front but it's got a couple lines where it can it can break out how much is oh, seller, seller credit, credit yeah. how much mm -hmm. is your deposit um nice. you know down payment plus closing costs so that's that's the gist of it um cool. when it comes to you want to show us the two one buy down and why, how that might tweak yeah for sure because this one's i mean i was looking at in process deals and i was having trouble finding something that wasn't a buy down like the buy yeah, down is today is yeah is uh is a really popular thing so again we've got it locked it's locked for 30 days from when we initially disclosed the cool part about this is like we saw earlier can this amount increase when it shows you the four and a half percent interest rate yes it can and it shows you that it adjusts every year starting in year two but also that it goes as high as 6.5 and that it stays there because anybody mm -hmm. who's seen the the, the two one buy down 6.5 is the rate you're going to get years three through 30. Mm -hmm. And the two and the one stand for it's 2% lower the first year, 1% lower the second year. And so 4.5, 5.5, 6.5 yep. for interest rate. This is a purchase for 340 with 20% with down. And it shows you, just like it showed you before, your, your one payment, your payment for, for year one, year two, and then years three through 30. And this, this again is an LE it's regulated. They should all look very similar. Right. And the, the thing I like about this is you can go get yourself into a six and a half percent loan. Mm -hmm. And you know, truth be told, like right now, like a lot, a lot of the stuff's in the low seven. So, so you're going to have to even pay to get six and a half. And mm -hmm. it's a 30 year fixed. A lot of people automatically look at something that's going to change. Oh my gosh, it's variable. It's risky. Mm. If you can't do anything, if, you know, because of property value, because of your credit, because of where interest rates go for any reason, if you get quote unquote stuck in this loan, you're stuck in what is equivalent to a 30 year fixed at six and a half percent. Right. This is just the seller pays this and it has to be the seller. It can't come out of the buyer's pocket. The, the savings that you see in years one and two, 1786, 1952, and then 2127. So mm. if that's roughly $175 um, in year two that's saved, and then another, you know, 165-ish from that. So so what's that, like 340 yeah. um, saved in year one? That $8,000 or whatever it is over those 24 months is, is a seller-funded buy-down. Right. If after one year, we're in October of, of 2023 and rates are 4.99. And you say, well, it just clicked up to five and a half. I want 30 years at, at 499 and you refinance. Mm -hmm. Whatever's left in that seller subsidy for year two gets refunded to you. It's actually sitting in an escrow account and it gets refunded to you. That's, you know, that's now, why I, I really don't like I don't think a lot of people understand that. And it took me a while to figure it out, right? This two one buy down really means you're getting a <laughs> you're getting a six and a half percent 30 year loan, except that the seller is taking a little bit of your payment in year one and year two and putting in an escrow. That's all that's happening. Right, right. And uh I'll show you here because it 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 will help people understand it. I think this two one buy down calculator. In this case, you know, that we got a 272 loan amount. And our so we're rate, only seeing a very small portion of it, if you want me yeah. to see. Oh, okay. I'm gonna, there we go. So 
you're saving yes. 341 in, in year one. You're saving 174 in year two. Here's the totals, 4,000 and 2,000 roughly, right? So the seller is giving you this subsidy, 6,190. And that's all it is, is, is you're saving that per month. And so when you refinance after 12 months and this 2098 is still sitting in escrow, mm -hmm. it goes towards paying down your principal in your refinance and off you go. Yeah, this is this two one buy down again. I didn't really click for me until the last few days. It's it really is a six and a half percent mortgage, thirty year fix, except the seller is paying a little bit of your payment for year one and year two. That's all it is. Yeah. So and, it is and, a thirty year fixed loan. Just that your the seller kicks in part of your payment. Right, and and in this case, you know, sixty one ninety is what the seller had had to do as as a subsidy. I can tell you, this three forty sales price, this mm -hmm. buyer got three percent in credit. So 3% yeah. of that is 10 to 6,100 yeah. went towards the buy down, that, yeah. that buy down, the yeah. other 6,100 paid for this, you know, 1.7 because yep. we're still paying points to get down to six and a half right. rates. From I'm sorry, seven, guys whatever. aren't at six and a half, right. Instead yeah. of seven and a quarter, you got six and a half, but it was all paid by the seller. Exactly. If you're buying today and you're not getting 3% seller credit or at least asking for it, you're not trying hard enough. Yeah. And I mean, something to, to mention too, that um, there's, there's probably going to be people that argue this one way or another, but paying 315 with 10,000 in credit does so much more for your payment. If, if, if payment is important to you. Than buying the house for 305 with zero credit. It's just light years better. And some people will say, well, you owe $10,000 more and your loan is bigger and you, you can't ever you know, go back and, and rebuy it for 305. Okay, fine. In the real world with investors that I work with or, or, or buyers that I work with, saving $190 a month is way more important. Every month. Every month than yes. looking up in nine years and saying, Oh, well, I only owe 268 and he owes 274. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's just that's just the reality of it, right? And yeah. and at the very least, you want to look at the different scenarios. And right. what enough people aren't doing is actually putting some thought into how do I structure this? How do I go about putting this deal together so it makes sense for me? Because in most markets, sellers are playing ball. They're not right. making the rules anymore. Yeah. And um, if you've got a good buy agent and a good lender who can work together to say, hey, we're going to write this um, in a way that makes sense for Johnny, right. then, then then we do that. But um, unfortunately, that's not always the case, Mike. Very cool. Well, this has been a lot of fun. I've certainly learned a lot in this. Let's bring up the uh, chat comments and see where they take us. You ready? Let's do it. All right, so let me see. Chats, here we go. Let me close this. All right, here we go. Let me go to the top because we always go top down. You're up, you're in first. Sarkees, good morning. Jag, good morning. Matt, oh, good morning, everyone. That's you. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay. Um, looking to cash out refi, have already reached out to Matt being LLC refi. Okay, so cool. Um, that's awesome. Ooh, Matt Hawkins in the house. Matt Hawkins. Like, yeah. He, he thought he was on today. He's like, Matt, you're calling on Matt. <laughs> you, you, you sit back, relax, lumberjack. I got this under control, buddy. Don't you worry. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Everybody on my channel is so amazing. <laughs> uh, question. Are you able to do 40 year loans? What is the down payment requirement for it? 40 year loans, Matt, the mortgage guy. Right. So, so these aren't available in conventional channels, but I also do plenty of non QM, whether it's, you know, debt service coverage ratio, bank statement loans, Here's what I'll tell you from what I know and why I haven't, I think I, I've wrote one. I've wrote one in the last 12 months where it made sense. In general, the rate spread is so much higher mm -hmm. that if you pay me nine and a half percent over 40 years versus 8% over 30, the yeah. payment's the same. You just don't pay anything towards principal. I don't want to sign you up for that. You don't want to sign up for that. And so- um, you know, there, there's going to be very rare scenarios. I did one where it was a Airbnb purchase and it was a 40 year interest only. It made sense for this, this investor and their goals and whatnot. But like, um, as a general rule, 
-hmm. it's something that, that doesn't make a lot of sense for 99.9% .9 of people. So, so um, yeah, this, this is where Matt, the mortgage guy's ability to do conventional and non QM make him unique, right? We have some non QM lenders on my channel that don't have that conventional side. So when they talk, they'll talk about a 40 year and 30 year non QM being pretty close, if not the same, but that's Matt's got more options, right? He can do conventional and things like that. So again, Matt, the mortgage guy has more options. Some of you can't do conventional anymore because you have too much loans or this, that, the other. You're only doing non-QM. Then it's worth a conversation. But uh, again, reach out to somebody you trust who's going to ask you questions because that's what I hate in the mortgage space. Somebody reaches out, asks a seven-second question. The person reacts. and they don't. If you're, if you're not getting asked more questions, they don't have your best interest in mind. They're just trying to sell you something. So be careful. Yeah, and, and what I want to avoid too is sometimes... You know, people are like, I can't make this a deal. What product can I find to make it to where this thing actually looks like a great investment? Like, mm -hmm. I, there, there's plenty of good investments to be found and to be had, or you don't have to put it in a, you know, 80 year interest only NAGAM for, yeah. for the thing. Oh, NAGAM, <laughs> stop it, stop it. We're not going, <laughs> dude, that gave me shudders. You don't even want that in the universe. Okay. Yeah, don't okay, put it out there. <laughs> erase that, erase that. Uh, question from Sean. Uh, this is probably more of an accounting question, but we will ask it because it's here. If you're inheriting one third of a property, can you use one third of the down payment to purchase it? I'm not really I, sure what that's asking. I know. I'm not sure, Sean, if you want to clarify, but um, you're inheriting a third. I think what he's saying is you know, he's getting a third of it. He, and and so he wants to use the equity he has in that third to maybe buy out the other partners. Yeah, I don't know. Sean, I need more. I need more data. Re-ask re that question, because right now it feels like an accountant question, which Matt or I do not play. I got I got half a cup of coffee and I got to get a little bit more in to be able to <laughs> figure out these complex ones, Sean. Um, Jim, when you calculate W-2 income for a loan, you use gross pay or net and how is, Oh, how do you calculate rental income? Um, so when we use W2 income, it's, it's always gross. Um, okay. and you know, you work for the state of California and 87, 12 is, is your, is your gross number. That's what we use to, to calculate your debt to income ratio. And then rental income is going to be done a few different ways. If you've owned the rental property and had it on your tax return, there's a formula for that. And we plug that in where you're going to be able to add back, you know, some of some of the expenses. Um, but essentially what you show on your taxes is what we have to use. If you're either brand new as a as a investment property owner, or if you're using projected rents on something you're buying or departing rents for something that you're leaving, so there's no history of it yet, then we just use 75%. Mm -hmm of those projected rents, meaning I'm leaving this house, market rent is 2000. We're going to use 1500 as, as a rent figure for that. So um, mm -hmm. if, if there's any follow-up, let me know uh, on, on any of these questions too. I just implore people. It doesn't cost you anything to get pre-approved. If you have any bit of complexity to your situation, you want to be a hundred percent certain that when you're out there submitting offers, you can get a deal done. Uh, because it might be a truth be told, I, I deal with a lot, a lot of investors. A lot of them are working so hard in their job or real estate investing that they just hand a stack of papers to their CPA yeah. and go, <laughs> I don't want to pay a lot of taxes. Okay, cool. I, I'm telling you, Mike, you'd be surprised the number of people where I'm like, you know, you lost like 30,000 per property this year, right? Like yeah. on your taxes, you're it negative. Yeah. 300,000 on, on these eight properties you own. Like, and so it's great from a, from a tax, you know, standpoint where it's like, Hey, you got legitimate write-offs and, and you wrote that off because you wanted to offset whatever for, for a loan purposes, it can hurt you. Right. And so Absolutely. you want to yeah. get that package into a lender to say, what, what does a lender think of this? We know what the IRS thinks of it. Yeah, exactly. All right. Question from Sean, other than VA and FHA, what is the lowest LTV you're seeing today? Conventional. Um, okay. I think he's asking for like lowest down payment, which yeah, would be highest yeah. LTV, but, but, but yeah. the coffee's Correct. kicking in, Sean. So I got you here. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So VA is hundred percent financing. FHA is three and a half percent. Um, there's 3% down if you're occupying it. 
and it's your first purchase as a conventional deal, um, truth be told, there's more down payment assistance programs coming out where FHA is essentially 100%, right? Um, the, the program that I've had a few people utilize um, in power, EPM is the lender out of Georgia. And we've brokered a couple of them where it's, it's a good down payment assistance program. I'm not a fan of down payment assistance. And this one's actually a good one where it's um, an FHA loan with three and a half percent versus worth of assistance. So essentially your down payment is covered. That three and a half of assistance is immediately forgiven. And you've got a higher interest rate. You've got mm -hmm. some more fees, but it's, it's yeah. not all the complexity of some of these state programs. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a nationwide program. And really sure. qualifying is like, you can't make a million dollars a year. Yeah. You gotta... What's the highest LTV on an investment loan today? 75? Well, 80? if you bought like a single family, okay, you could, you could buy it 85% LTV, 15% down. It is Single so family. disgusting when it comes to rate and term. Oh, and okay. I would never, yeah. you know, and, and the really down. the conversation most of the time is, do you want to put 20 or 25? Right. Because, because between those two, for whatever reason, Fannie and Freddie have decided, like, we Great really thing. want you to put 25% down. We're going to yeah. incentivize you to the tune of a half a percent in rate um, yeah. and some cost where I, sh sometimes I show people, Mike, where on, on certain loan sizes, hey, listen, rather than spend 9,000 in points to get you this rate, mm -hmm. put an extra 14,000 down and you'll get a lower rate than that to where it's like mm -hmm. the difference out of pocket is only a few thousand dollars. And now you've got seven, five versus eight and a quarter because 25% down on investment property really uh, moves the needle when it comes to terms. So I would I would suggest if you're able to and, you, and, and you're thinking about, should I do 20, should I do 25? Look at 25 at the very least because okay. seasoned investors I work with generally do that. When you get to the, the multi-stuff, two through four unit, they require 25. So you got to do 25% down. All right. Question from Jag around appraisals. Um, I think what she's really pointing out there is the last couple of years uh, appraisals. So I've been doing, I've been doing this 20 some years. And there's a couple of times where it really felt like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. It'll come in at number. Uh, 2021 was one of those years, as was 2006. Uh, I think what you're going to see happen over the next couple of years is appraisals are going to increasingly not come in. And I would never let a mortgage guy tell me something about an appraisal. That's not his or her lane. Uh, it's not for him to comment uh, there's a lot more regulation around appraisals today. So again, it feels to me like this mortgage bro broker is starving and thus trying to say anything, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. And, and the funny part is, is I've, I've heard this line, you know, there's people in, in retail banking um, or, or probably in all channels, to be fair, that say stuff and it's sales, right? Oh, I've got direct access to my underwriters. So I'm going to make sure that your loan goes smooth and I get this taken care yeah, of. Right at the top of the stack. I got you. Bullshit radar, right? Oh, we've got our own panel of appraisers that always work in Placer County. Like they're the best of the best. Bullshit, right? Like we're all doing it yeah. through appraisal management companies, yep. which are going to find a local appraiser. Like, of course, I'm not going to find someone from Idaho come appraise your property in Southern California. Like what kind of, so it's an appraisal panel for that area. And um, you can like, have no, you can't pick appraisers now used to be able to, you can't yeah. pick them. I mean, it's so hard to get an appraisal license too, that like, I, I get where you're going with that Jag, where sometimes it might feel, and this, and this broker might even truly believe some of the stuff that they're saying. It might feel like, Hey, don't worry. It's going to come in at value. Um, because with, with all these different variables and all these different things where here's the comparable sales, here's a couple adjustments we can make. It probably happens more than it should where, you're like, did they really come in at exactly three twelve? The purchase yeah, I price. Always, I always thought that was interesting. Why is it always come in at the purchase price? Yeah, but I think I think what that is more is them saying we see the sales contracts, the appraiser will see it, and they're like, you know what? Like, there's a comp at three twenty. There's one at three oh five that's in worse condition. There's another one at three fifteen. If 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 they were in the dark, they might assign the three fifteen value to it. But they just say, you know what, three twelve, it matches the contract price. That's what someone's will. So, so they just go in at that. But um, 
you know, it's my honest truth is that, you know, people probably put more weight into what an appraisal value is than they should, because it's really this one appraiser's best attempt on this one day yeah. to collect so the I, data they have. Yeah. So I've, I've had to challenge appraisers before appraisals, appraisals before. Um, I mean, I had one, I had a flip that I did. I, it was probably two years ago now. Well, let's just use some round numbers. I was selling it for 280. The first appraisal came in at 235. And, you know, we challenged the appraiser. Uh, they decided not to change it. Uh, we went back to the buyer and said, hey, we're, we, me, the seller is going to pay for a new appraiser. And it wasn't FHA, so you could do this. If it was FHA, you'd be stuck. Uh, and it came in at, at, at cost. So again, it, it, different appraisers come up with different numbers. There's three different ways. There's, uh, you know, purchase uh, other other comps. Then there's income. There's, you know, repay. It, it's just, it's a pretty sophisticated thing. Uh, but I would never let a mortgage broker tell me it's going to come in. That's a, especially today, right? It's it's very much disconnected on right. purpose. Yeah. yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. Chester. Oh. They're asking you is great. It's greatmortgagebroker.com. Is it all 50 states or is it still like 46 or 47? Yeah, it's 47 or 48. We're getting so close. Like my team member, Laura, is working on Nevada license. It's such a pain in the butt to get your mortgage license in some states. Uh, it took us 18 months or so to get New York. Um, but since I'm all about truth and transparency, Chester, if you go to greatmortgagebroker.com, fill out the form, we're going to be able to help you in 48 states. If it's Nevada, I'm going to say, here's Elena Boland, the number one broker in Nevada. The fact that I've sent her 50, 60 referrals per year for the last three years, she's going to take good care of you. She's not going to, not going to mess around and they do good work in general. If it's in Virginia, we know the best um, one to send you in Virginia, but 48 out of 50 states, um, it's going to be us and, and we're happy to help. So yeah, greatmortgagebroker.com. I'm working on a deal right now that's about to foreclose. I'm trying to figure out the payoff. Is it interest bearing principal balance or the acceleration amount? I would, I don't know why we're not talking to the actual mortgage holder and getting a, a payoff quote. Yeah. All you got to do is, is order a payoff, right? Because it's, it's yeah. got a principal balance of 271 and then you've got 19 interest days of interest that aren't paid. Yeah. yeah, but you also probably have penalties. I mean, if it's in foreclosure, there's not paying, so you got penalties and all these other things. I'd order a payoff. Yeah, I would. I would get with a local title company and befriend yeah. them and tell them that you're gonna, you know, work with them through you need escrow. Some help. Yeah, they can. Yeah. They can order a payoff for you for sure. What do rates run today for thirty year fix owner oc? Obviously, there's lots of variables. I think. I think I saw. Was it Thursday? Mortgage Business Daily said the average was three point. Oh, I'm sorry. Three, seven. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Oh man, you're hurting everyone's doing? feelings. Seven point three one or seven point three two as of Thursday. Right. Yeah. I think I think the stuff that 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 I'm pricing on on the broker side is about seven and a quarter. Um, yeah. If if you're not paying any points, and this is an interesting thing that I haven't talked a lot about, but um, if if you're the one paying the points, if it's not the seller paying the points. I believe that rates sometime in the future are going to be less than they are now to where you might want to think twice about paying a point to get to six, six, five. The, the answer is to get the seller to pay. Let's just change this conversation. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're in a different market. Get seller to pay or right, find a new right. deal. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I had to start with that too, because, that's that's the funny part is is it from somebody who's who's in the weeds and, and writing yeah. mortgages every day nobody is is getting seven and a quarter seven and a half on a on a primary on investment yeah. property it's, it's a it's a great looking loan but on primary they're they're getting credits and they're buying it down and and so while that par rate without points might be seven and a quarter the stuff that's being written is probably you know, between six yeah. and a half and seven, sometimes even even lower. And a loan scenario change once you've actually started the process. Let me try this one. Absolutely. A loan scenario is a salesperson's tool 
and there are no regulations, so they can lie, lie, lie. The loan estimate is what's regulated. That's my opinion, but is that right? True and even that too, like that loan estimate can mm -hmm. can change. And so you want to, and this is this is a good piece of advice for people, is that the two documents you'll see that have the numbers, loan estimate and closing disclosure. After we've gotten appraised value and we've gotten approval and, and, and we're a little bit ways down the road, that document will change into what's called a closing disclosure, where what I'm disclosing to you can't change before final loan documents go out. But even that loan estimate, Mike, can change. Um, you know, there might be scenarios where the buyer says, you know what, like Matt showed me the rate sheet instead of 6.625. Like I want to, I want to tack on to what the seller's um, mm -hmm. doing to buy down points. I want to, I want to, I want to go to six and a quarter. Right. And right. they, that's like a change of circumstance. A new loan sure. estimate comes out and this, like yeah. I checked the box it says this was the client that, that wanted to do it. Client so, desire. Yep. So mm -hmm. it can change. So really like you want to always be, be looking at that. Um, the key here for me though, is loan scenario. A loan scenario is a tool, a marketing piece, a sales tool that the person you're speaking with is not, it could be, it could, it's, it's just created. Matt created a spreadsheet on purpose to mirror a loan estimate because it's helpful. A loan scenario is just pixie dust. It, People it can be, say whatever they want. Whatever they I, want. You know, somebody comes to me and they go, oh, so-and-so promised me this. And, and this is the funny experiment that, that you can do. All Like somebody promised you the world. That's awesome. That sounds like a great deal. Uh, send over to me and Michelle a loan estimate. We'll look at it. If, if you're in that great smoking deal, like we're going to wish you well. A loan estimate never comes, Mike. Or all of a sudden, it's all oh, scenario. You, you yeah, know yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. Like it changed, and that was actually um, a, a recent deal we got where I showed the client. I go, listen, I'm doing this thing with really raised within margins. Here's the best we can do. Love to earn your business. I understand you're trying to get the best loan for your family. The next day, he goes, Hey, Matt, they moved the goalpost on me. No kidding. Work, Shocking. You know, Right. And so, so he was in his head using another lender. And I just said, honestly, this is the best we can do, man. Like, I don't know where they're getting this pricing. It was yesterday's pricing or wish pricing or them just lying. It was one of the three. It doesn't even matter to me. They came back and said, Matt, they changed. I think I trust you more. And I said, I think that's a good call. <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> yeah. All right. When does a rate lock happen? Let's hit that again. In general, it's going to happen right when you get the contract and the title fees over to the lender. Once I know you're in contract and we get that, we're going to lock you immediately. Um, and um, you you don't necessarily have to lock, but anybody in their right mind is locking everything immediately in this yeah. volatile uh, market. How many points can a mortgage broker negotiate to buy down or is it regulator based? So I don't think mortgage brokers negotiate points. Um, I think it's the buyer and seller. I think you can, I think mortgage brokers can quote, but it is state-based as I understand it. How many points will this, it, it, you know, what's the maximum points I believe? Yeah. I think what you're going to find is in to pass QM, which is, right. which is qualified for everybody. Yep. Three points is, is kind of the max yep. um, three points in cost to the buyer. And that's to protect a consumer from paying seven points in cost or something absolutely yeah, ridiculous. Silly. And, and so um, I was actually going to pull this up so people can see, you know, if you're buying something for 550,000, we're not seeing it yet. Just so you know. I know I'm, I'm, I'm still stirring in my head, whether. Okay whether I'm allowed to show this. I think I am. Don't get in trouble. <laughs> um, no, this is all legal. Um, and so, yeah, this, this is a scenario with 10% down on a okay. conventional deal. And share screen. This is something that people should understand too. Based on your credit score, your down payment, what type of property, all that, you're going to have a, a rate sheet. It's not like, oh, hey, Mike, you're buying an investment property 25% down, your credit's 790. 
here's your rate. You're going to have a sheet. And like I said earlier, sometimes I choose and I say, you know what? The sweet spot here is 699. It costs a half a point, you know, mm -hmm. 2,900 bucks. So that's where we go. You can go to 6625 and it costs you two points. Mm -hmm. You can go up to 6375 and it costs you 2.9 points. Here's the part that, that throw people off. My rate sheet goes all the way down to five and a quarter. 8.5 points for 42,000 bucks. Sweet deal, right? Yeah. I couldn't write that loan if I wanted to. It's not going to pass QM. So really anything lower than 6375 on this is irrelevant. You couldn't write yeah. it if you wanted to. Um, and so- I as, think that's hilarious. Yeah, as a <laughs> consumer, I think what I typed in was 400 grand with 10% uh, with down. Mm -hmm. You can get a credit from the lender. We'll actually give you a credit if if you're at seven three seven five, you know you pay twelve hundred bucks to get seven and a quarter. You pay twenty four hundred to get seven and eight. Yeah. But this this is something that you might not see everywhere. There's there's sweet spots, and if you look at this and you know what you're looking at, to get from seven and a quarter down to six nine nine, that's that's a quarter point for all intents and purposes. Yeah. That's only a seventeen hundred dollar spread. Twelve hundred yeah, twenty nine. Yeah. Then the next quarter from 699 to 675 big jump is Five over $4,000. Yeah. And so like this 699 is the sweet spot and lenders, you know, different lenders are going to price. I can look at other lenders and, and they might price different, you know, they might have a different sweet spot or it might be um, 699. That's 6,600 there. And I mean, not to not to continue to beat the drum of why you should work with a broker, but um, yeah. I only priced in two lenders, and I've got six different options. I could I could go up to my pricer, and I could. Yeah, um, this is why you've got to reach out to Matt, the mortgage guy. Great, it's just there's so many variables. You got to have a discussion. Your rates, your this, your that. It's just yeah, lots of stuff going on. All right, where are we going? I want to make sure we don't miss this one, and I'll let you continue to go through them, Mike. But right. Lorena. Asked seller concessions, max 2% on investment loans. Yes. So if you're Good. buying an investment property and you're using a conventional loan, 2% max. Um, some people might be like, oh no, I bought a fourplex with FHA and I was able to get this. Well, FHA is 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 different. All, all yeah. loan types are different. There's like a matrix that I found recently that I should probably share where if, if it's owner-occupied, and you put down X percent, you can get up to 6% on conventional. If it's investment, it's max 2%. If it's FHA, it's 6%. So different loan types are different, but for, for people who are doing investment property purchases with conventional loans, it's 2% max. Very cool. So third-party fees are the same regardless of lenders. I would say they're the same at closing, but you saw earlier how easy it is for a uh, uh, a sneaky mortgage broker to change them to make it look better right but but they they eventually are the same what the title company's charging eventually eventually this right what 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 they're what they're doing and so as a consumer if you look at what's my rate what's my payment what is the lender charging me in box a you'll you'll have other sneaky stuff come up right where i've looked at uh these loan scenarios and I go, you're buying something for 800000 and they have $38 a month for homeowners insurance? You really? think you could yeah. find a, a policy for $450 a year? Yeah, They're putting it there because then it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's 170 My bad. Like, My bad. Oops. Yeah. Oopsie daisy. Yeah. But but I'm telling you, Mike, I've had so many of these conversations to where like, I could literally pull those out of my head where um, a consumer just sees, hey, they're showing me it's 2700 a month, Matt. Like, why are you this amount? Well- they're lowballing on homeowners insurance. They're lowballing on property taxes. They're leaving this out. They're not showing you this. At the end of the day, if they charged you eight thousand dollars for six point two five, and I've got you at six point one two five for forty four hundred, I'm yeah. better. You can throw the rest of the stuff out because oh, no the ways. homeowners insurance is whoever you pick. The property taxes, yeah, it is, is it my it call is. or the other lender's call? It's, it's the county's yeah. call, and yeah. and so. That's what you want to look at is your rate and your cost for the rate. And really, yeah. if, if you just look at those two things, you can throw everything else out. Yeah. So Sarkees, I would tell you to reach out to Matt to get your quotes, your rates. 
Uh, you have to do 25% down today for two through fours. Uh, Jag, that's really an attorney question. I would go to Rylas Dana about taking in and out of a LLC. Um, that's not for Matt and I to do. We're not licensed to have that discussion. Um, how much does a loan estimate document change for VA buyers a vet here? I don't, I think the whole idea is it doesn't change. Correct. Correct. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to be looking at the same document. So same, you're going to be wanting to look at the Everybody's same the same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when does it make sense to pay off PMI? You got to, you have any thoughts on that? Um, I guess somebody might be asking like, if they want to do it like on their initial loan, pay it off. Yeah. So I did it once. I mean, I actually have experience with this. I bought a property. I think it was my third property. I did a 90, 10, 10, which meant I had PMI at the time. Property values were going up. Uh, I refied the loan when I did a cash out and got rid of PMI. Right. Yeah. But it's, a mean, I, it's a process. Yeah. Which, which um, I've actually got a property right now that I bought in 2020 where um, they've got a form you fill out and you mm -hmm. say, listen, I owe 380. This thing's worth 600. I shouldn't be paying mm -hmm. PMI. And they right. charge you 150 bucks. They do an automated value. A drive by. Yeah. Exactly. And they remove it. Um, but in general, um, you know, it's, I, I like these questions and I like these scenarios because it's all math and you might be in a loan where for people getting into loans today, I huh? think, I think buying out the PMI upfront doesn't make any sense at all because no. we're eventually going to be in a lower interest rate environment where if you've got a 6.75 with $78 a month in mortgage insurance, it's just going to look even sweeter when you refinance it to 599 or 549 and the mortgage insurance gets removed. So um doesn't make sense to do it up front. And then it's just a math question once once the refinance opportunity comes along. Mm -hmm. I I truly believe, like me and my team mastered being able to clearly show somebody mm -hmm. cost versus benefit. You're yeah. gonna save $190 a month. This thing costs money, refinances cost money. People don't let anyone tell you yeah. they don't. <laughs> exactly. They Somebody's paying loan, whether they charge you up front. Like yeah. they're sneaking it in the front door or the back door, higher interest yeah. rate, whatever so the case may be. Somebody's they're, getting paid. Yeah. Somebody's yeah. getting paid. Yeah. There's not a bunch of uh, nonprofit mortgage companies, especially. When nowadays. do you, uh, when do you need a survey? Uh, basically lenders will identify when that might be required. Yeah. It's really popular in Texas um, yeah. and, and other States. I and think so I was required. I had one of all the properties I've done, which is hundreds. Now I had one for some reason uh, need a survey and I don't remember why. I'll yeah, go look that up. I don't know. It's interesting why. too, because I'm learning more about it, doing a lot more business in Texas. And uh, yeah. a lot of times the seller has one on file in some mm -hmm. crazy cases, like the seller didn't. And so we had to go out there and get us a new one. It was a rural area and it cost 1800 bucks, but yeah. So do you have to declare what the house is being used for? Absolutely. Right. Owner rock second home investment. It's part of the upfront. Yep. Yeah. And if you, if you disclose incorrectly, it's called mortgage fraud. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to do that. That's, that's called uh, going to jail. Yeah. That's a bad mortgage fraud bat. <laughs> uh, so when I reach out to Matt or will Connor also look to see what type of loan, I guess Connor's on your team. Yeah, Connor's actually handling Florida and Texas and some other oh, okay. states for me. So uh, yeah, Connor will look at it. And, you know, if for whatever reason, you're not getting the answers you want, just, uh, you know, Connor's moving from New Jersey to California next mm. Saturday. So cool. Connor's going to be sitting right next to me. He can go like this. He's tapping my shoulder. Nice. And that's that. I, I I honestly think that that's kind of the cool part about working with the team, is Michelle's having conversations every day. Connor's having conversations every day. You know, Kyle and 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 folks I've got working in other states, and we're all collaborating, working together. They're gonna contact me and say, Matt, you know, I was talking yeah. to Jag. Uh, I was looking at this. You know, I know Angel Oak has this product. Home Express has this product, and. They're high level loan officers, sometimes have better answers than me. But a lot of times, like with most things, you start bouncing ideas off a few smart people that do it every day. We'll, we'll come up with an answer together. Yep. So Marco, what I would ask you to do is reach out to Matt, the mortgage guy to show you comparison. So he has your situation and your, your details. 
um, to compare loan options. That's what he does. So Sean came back. So you were right. You you guessed correctly. All right. Uh, half, a, half a cup of coffee. He's inheriting a property <laughs> and he wants to use his equity as a down payment to pay the other two off. You were correct. Uh, I have no idea. I, it sounds like a sounds like a conversation needs to be had, I think, Sean. Yeah, you know what I, I would say too, Sean, is there's really cool um, loan products out there um, that are like gift of equity purchase where like that's mm-hmm. what happens. You're, you're getting gifted the equity and you can use that a, as your down payment. On, on different loan types. So let me see. One third is a down payment. So let's just use real math. It's a three hundred thousand dollar house. It's owned free and clear. That means Sean gets a hundred grand and his two sisters get a hundred grand each. What he wants to do is use his hundred as equity to get a two hundred K loan. That seems very doable. I believe so. Yeah. But and, that would and- be a process because you would have to get them off title. Yeah. And so so what might have to happen is there's rules around um, cash out refinance, which this one mm-hmm. kind of turns into a cash out refinance. Where oh, absolutely, yeah. You'd have to be on title for six months. I think you might be able to sidestep that rule because of the fact that it was inherited and be able Maybe. to do the cash out refinance immediately Maybe. where it solves both your problems, right? It takes them mm-hmm. off title. You cash out refinance in your name get the 200 to pay them off. Now you've got, you know, 66% yeah, but LTV. G- generally you're you, generally you're walking into any deal, 33% equity. That's enough to get a loan. Generally speaking, right. There may right. be a timing issue with all of that. That's a different discussion, uh, but seems doable. Yeah. And I think too, like some people will be like, Oh, this is, this is a purchase for me. You probably don't want it to be a purchase. No, because that resets taxes. Taxes yeah. to be reassessed. You want to do, no, a you want it inherited. Finance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. I think I think that's where we're going. So, yeah, reach out to us, Sean. It's a fun one. We always like fun stuff. Are closing costs cheaper on VA loans? I have no idea. I wouldn't think. Why would they be? I don't know. No, I mean the the great part it's about kind of the same yeah. VA loans. I've got like the best VA lenders in the country um, that that work for you, mortgage. So they're championed for. And I I literally it's funny that that you asked this, Lorena. I was part of a thread where. Um, Somebody was saying like VA loans are the are the cheapest best loans. Prove me wrong. Um, and so this conversation was one being had by a bunch of mortgage professionals li- mm-hmm. yesterday. And um, as far as closing costs, they're not necessarily cheaper. There's stuff during a transaction that the veteran's not allowed to pay for. So in those cases, right. it'll save money. But the real benefit is that you finance 100. No percent There's PMI. no mortgage insurance. A lot of 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 uh, VA buyers, if you're even 25% disabled rating, you don't pay a funding fee. And so, and, and the interest rate is lower. The interest mm-hmm. rate on VA loans is lower as long as you're working with a broker. Great mortgagebroker.com side. Is there a relationship between DTI and credit scores or is DTI based on gross income? Yeah, the credit score doesn't have anything to do with your debt to income. Debt to income is basically you gross 10,000, you've got a mortgage payment, and you've got credit card payments and you've got student loans and, and that relationship, whether you're 800 credit score or 640, um, yeah. it, it doesn't matter. But what I would say is with an 800 credit score, the automated system is going to allow you more flexibility in that DTI. Correct. Yeah, if you've yeah, got yeah. a 606 credit score, I've seen the, the the automated system that needs to say approve eligible looking at one yesterday we had to get that front end housing ratio into like 30%. Oh, wow. Because the, the system, the algorithm says, you know what, like 606, got some challenge credit, got some things going on here. Like we don't want to put that person in a position to, to default. It's a good thing. What, what qualifies as a first time buyer if you haven't owned real estate for 14 years? Three years, three years. If you haven't had ownership interest, which means like if you co-sign for somebody, you're on that loan. Um, but, but no ownership interest in the last three years is what, all, all lenders deem as first time buyer. Why do appraisers see sale contract? No idea. It's part of the process. Yeah. I mean, it's a good question. It, it's, it's kind of, <laughs> one of those... yeah, I have no idea. Sounds right. like why do they get to see the tests while they're taking it? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Not, <laughs> not, not for me to decide. Are you in Colorado? I sure am Lorena. 
So you're just, com. you're not in Virginia, not in Nevada. Yeah, I think Full those stop. are the only two, yeah. So everywhere else, yes. Uh, investment loans, Lorena got that one. She's good. Yeah, 2% max on investment. You guys are awesome. 3% for owner-occupant. Sorry for the confusion. What is the difference between stated interest rate and APR? Those are the two different rates. Right, yeah. The, the APR is like the true cost of loan, including loan costs. So the APR is always going to be higher unless there's a big lender credit baked in there. Um, so if you've got all the fees that that you know basically are are front loaded, you pay it up front. Um, it's it's telling you you know your true cost to to borrow isn't six and a half percent; it's six point five nine four. Right. Which you can use that if you've got two different loans you're looking at. And one's got an APR of, you know, 6.9 on a six and a half percent interest rate. You know that like those upfront costs are heavy, yeah, heavy. If, if, if that's being pulled higher. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Uh, Matt, when you do monthly DTI, do you account for the fact that property taxes will increase sometimes dramatically uh, once the sale, once the sale goes through? That's, that's another great question, Jag. And um, the answer is that lenders don't, right? They're just calculating. They use existing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hopefully your, uh, your income increases over the years. Cause I know that like in California, we've got that, you know, one of the few great things we have in California prop 13, baby is the two, the 2% cap, right. For prop 13. I know in Texas, like they get reassessed like Ooh. every year. And so they keep yeah. going up, but, um, that's, that's, a, man, you got some of the, some, some savvy investors in here, Mike asking, good they're doing questions. the work, baby. They're yeah. Doing they're the doing work. the work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you do commercial loans? 10 units? I cannot. Two, no. uh, four units is, is my max. Is a, yeah. Uh, so that's what Stephen Dow does. I did. Uh, I have done purchase and refis with Stephen Dow Velocity Mortgage. 30 year fixed. It's a non QM loan, not conventional. What do you think non-QM. the rate is, guesstimate on something like that? Today, nine and a quarter. Okay. Yeah. I got it at 399, but that's because I did the work. That's because nice. I did the work before. Yeah. Um, are you able to get property tax insurance impounded after you've already have a mortgage where it is not? That would be a change. I don't think you can do that. Yeah. You'd have to talk to the servicer. No, the, I don't know there would be the service. I have not. No, that's the servicer that I've seen it go the other way. I've seen you Correct. start with impounds and then tell the and take it out. I'm going to pay this on my own. Not the other way. Cause there's up. a fee involved. It, it's there's a cost involved, which they didn't set up. So I doubt it. Uh, what uh, my, my tax in, what? tax increases 200% after buying a property in Ohio. I think you're talking about property taxes. 14K. Yeah, that's Woo! wild. I wonder yeah, that, if that hurts. I don't yeah. I don't know Ohio at all. I don't know. Yeah, because I was gonna say, like <clears throat> I've seen this happen more often than it should, where you buy a property, somebody's paying two thousand dollars a year in property taxes, but based on today's price, your new property tax is gonna be eight thousand. I've seen lenders um make mistakes where mm-hmm. they set up the impounds for two thousand dollars a year and then you get hit a year later and then for you a get big hit. check and so hopefully that's not the case there jag where you know it was supposed to be 14 from the start based on what you bought it yeah at. if you are in california and you are going to buy any of the properties that i bought in 2010 you're going to get a big tax bill yep and a supplemental tax bill and move. a supplemental tax <laughs> bill as well yeah I don't, I don't know ohio i'm guessing kind of similar thing all right we got through them all look at oh, that oh man Look good that. stuff just, just under 90 minutes uh so matt closing thoughts your website one more time hit your youtube channel yeah go check you, out matt you, the mortgage guy you. on youtube i've got to have 700 videos right now and you know what i would love like this group has great questions um so i'll, I'll try to check in on the on the facebook group but these are high quality questions that should be youtube videos um and i love making videos that you know, if you've got the question and multiple investors here have a question, 10,000 people across the country have the question. And so, you know, continue to ask the questions. Um, I love that there's high level people in here doing the work on the right track. And that's what is going to create opportunities in the next six months. I know when I talk to somebody, this is someone that's going to find a great deal based mm-hmm. on the questions they're asking, the work they're doing. They're doing then, the work. They're not just sitting on the couch waiting right. for somebody to ring a bell. Yeah. And then I've got clients that, you know, are, are just, uh, 
going to show up for for a brief millisecond and if the home run deal doesn't appear within nine seconds they're yeah. off and they're probably yeah. buying a nft art or something so um kudos to these folks that are trying to build long-term wealth um a way that's been been proven besides buying monkey pictures there you go there you go well matt <laughs> i um uh, i appreciate you this will be live on my youtube channel tomorrow this is the last video that i'm recording new or original on Friday or Saturday. So you get the honor. Thank you for doing this. Um, folks, deep dives. We'll, we're going to still do them. They're just not going to be on Saturdays. Uh, I will likely be doing them on Sundays going forward. It's been fun. It's been real. I'm going to start enjoying my Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, so we will be back to doing the live videos Sundays through Thursdays. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, Mike.